Hi. Hello. Hi, Hi. Um, This is a story that would not have happened without DeRoe. So let me explain that. On October 15th, 1986, the day before my 29th birthday, I had dinner in New York with my friend Rena Frank. We had known each other through Project De Road since 1980 when I'd moved to New York after graduating from Princeton. Rena gave me a birthday present, a massive bound volume with pages of heavy stock paper. On the first page she wrote, the art of life is to know how to enjoy a little and endure much. May you have only happy thoughts and memories when you open this book. Rena had gotten out of Germany in 1938 for London, came to New York, so she knew a lot about enduring. On the page after Rena's note, I wrote, inscriptions in the book of life, a term with meaning during the high holidays. In fact, I called the volume the Sefer HaChaim, the book of life. I wrote my first entry the next day, October 16, 1986. Well, I write in it only on New Year's Day and birthdays. At first, I limited entries to one page per day, and then I went to a half a page for each year, two entries per page, once I realized I would run out of space after 40 years or so. The entries roll on with upbeat passages of resolutions, mostly of the get in shape, write more, make more money variety, and unvarnished reports on life's challenges love lost and found, marriage, leaving Brooklyn for Connecticut, parenthood, unemployment, 9-11, divorce, economic crashes, job losses, the search for stability. Rena's hope that the book would contain only happy thoughts and memories can never be a reality. The entries don't get any tougher to read than that of New Year's Day 2002, exactly 20 years ago. This was a few months after being laid off from my job as an editor for a consulting firm, losing a college roommate on 9-11, and starting the process of getting divorced. I wrote, a year of catastrophe ends, a year of change at least begins. What will I say or be or think or do a year from now is impossible to predict. It cannot be much worse, barring illness, than the year now buried. No job interviews to look forward to. I grind my teeth in the frustration of our life. But then, October 16th, 2002, 10 months later. Wow, lots to report since the last entry. New job at KPMG, which is an accounting firm, since February 18th, and a new apartment in Stanford since October 2nd. Sam, my son, is here tonight for my birthday. The book structure of long jumps in time creates a storytelling dynamic that I like. Every entry marks a fresh start. What adventures await me? On January 1st, 2020, I wrote, The year and decade ahead is off and running as I make good progress on a names-oriented open mic piece, text with Sam and call with Cooper, my brother, episode of Mrs. Maisel tonight. Boy, did I sound pumped about 2020. Well, we know what happened. But I'm still here, and now we're on the cusp of 2022. I have four pages left in the bound volume, enough for eight years, which will get me to 2028. The last entry should be on my 71st birthday. After that, who knows? Maybe I'll start a new Sefer HaChaim, and I'll dedicate it to Rena, who wished me only happy thoughts and memories. Thank you. What a great ritual. Um, and yeah, it sounds like maybe Rena knew that it wouldn't all be happy memories. Um, no. Yeah, but enjoy a little and endure much. I yep. mean, I think that a lot of us can relate to that. Um, and also that you just don't know what's ahead. Yeah. So, but yeah, we can all sort of keep keep getting through it like the turtle just one one foot in front of the other um and i love hearing sort of you know about 2002 and how much can sort of turn around in in 10 months yeah um thank you so much for sharing that with us it made me think also a little bit of sheila's story worth project mm. and 
the idea of having, you know, something to reflect on when you, when you put a pen to paper. Um, okay. And speaking